I'd like to welcome into our midst here this evening a really important sense maker, one who exemplifies what the humanities is all about. So, Vice Chancellor, I'd like to introduce Alida Danoy, who will be our guest speaker here this evening. Alida Danoy is a distinguished journalist. She matriculated from Herschel Girls School and holds an honors degree in economics from UCT and an MA in economics from the Sorbonne. She has worked as a researcher at UCT, first in the Southern African Labor and Development Research Unit, and then in the Industrial Health Research Group, which she co-founded as a service organization for the Cape Trade Union Movement. During the mid-1980s, she worked as a translator in Paris. In 1988, she moved to Réunion Island to work for the journal, and I'm going to mispronounce this, Témoin Jamais. In 1992, she started a career in journalism as a financial reporter at the Cape Argus. She edited the business section before becoming assistant editor for personal finance in Cape Town. Appointments as the editor of Business Report and as acting editor of the Pretoria News for a year in 2006 were followed by her becoming the first, sorry, becoming, must get that right, becoming first deputy editor of the Cape Times from December 2006 until April 2009 and the first female editor of the Cape Times. Denoy was the 2014 recipient of the Nat Nakasa Journalism Award for Courageous Journalism. Might I ask you to please address us? Thank you very much, Dr. Sudin. Vice Chancellor, SRC President, academic staff, graduating students, Parents, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to be here today to talk to you in the hall where I graduated so many years ago. My mother taught at this university for more than 30 years. My father, my brother, many of my friends graduated from here, and one of my sons studied here, so I have a very strong connection to UCT. Thank you very much for inviting me. Today is the Day of Reconciliation. Reconciliation Day for journalists, for newspaper editors, is a bit of a nightmare. Because like Human Rights Day and Freedom Day and Youth Day and Women's Day, it rolls around every year. And every year we have to try to find something new to write in our editorials. So the time-honored solution for many editors is to pull out last year's editorial and do a bit of cutting and pasting and end up with some powerful conclusion like We've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. Do you mind holding this thing because I don't think that's working. My apologies. Is this better? Can you hear me? So I, I won't do that. But I do want to tell you a story which to me illustrates just how hard reconciliation still is and what we can do about it. At the Cape Times, like at all morning newspapers, we used to meet in the late afternoon editors, layout, sub-editors, and the chief photographer to map out the next day's edition. The news editors would present the best stories of the day and the picture editor the best photos, and we would decide what to put on which page. At one of these meetings, the picture editor brought in photos of the forced removal of some families on the Cape Flats by the city of Cape Town's strangely named anti-land invasion unit. One of the pictures showed demolished shacks, sheets of corrugated iron, families sitting among their belongings on the sand, and on the skyline, a scruffy dog. We joked about how some readers would call the newspaper the next day, offering to give the dog a home. And they did. The point I am making is that those readers noticed only the dog, yet the families were there for all to see. In South Africa, because of our history, it's probably harder than elsewhere to put aside our own blinkers and see things as they really are, instead of as we expect to find them. It takes effort and humility to see the world as others see it. Yet that is what we have to do if we want to bring about justice, without which, of course, there can be no reconciliation. Here at UCT, you have been taught to observe and to think for yourself. It is an important lesson. And as you leave the university, 
you have a choice about how to use it. You can put your time at UCT behind you and move on into what is quaintly called the real world and settle down and fit in and make money and stop questioning the way things are. Or you can take what you've learned here and use it in the world out there. You can go on asking questions, as you did while you were here. You can insist on looking at the world with your own eyes and making up your own mind about it. A very small minority of people in the world have a university degree. In sub-Saharan Africa, according to UNESCO, only about 5% of people of university age go to university. And it seems to me that those of us who have been given this gift, this great gift, have a duty. And that duty is to be insubordinate. Not in our manners, of course, but in our thinking. We have a duty to observe carefully, to question what we are told, and to decide for ourselves. So as you head off to whatever you've planned to do next, I would like to invite you to take with you that independence of mind, that skepticism, that restless, demanding curiosity, the, that respect for the evidence and for the well-argued point of view of others, which are the glories of the academic environment. Don't believe anyone who cannot convince you with argument. Take nothing for granted. Be insubordinate. Cultivate an outlaw mind. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's not as if previous generations are handing you a perfect world, one which you must carry carefully so you don't drop it and break it. It is a messy world, full of injustice and disaster and old, rotting certainties. An insane world where bankers earn much more than presidents, where women fight for a job cleaning other people's toilets, where adult men down the road here in Rondebosch earn a living waving a giant yellow sponge hand to point motorists to a townhouse development they will never themselves be able to afford. Where somewhere in the Pacific there is a sea of floating plastic rubbish so big it takes more than a day for an ocean-going liner to sail across it. I'm sure you can build something better than that. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs>